morning to you. How you doing? It's Tuesday. That means a life and style is all about art. We call it a Tuesday. Tuesday. Now look who joined us today. Yay! <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Are you ready? I am ready. And you know you brought something different for the show. You say, Makali, we need to do a competition. That's why yes. we're holding white papers. We're going to try and make those. You remember those little boats you used to make in nursery, primary school? So we're going to compete head to head and see. Why are you starting already? Look at this one. <laughs> So we're going to try and... You need to be smart in life. Yeah, I know. And make a boat. Oh, good Lord. Mike is... <laughs> we're going to try and make a boat. I hope. Ah. I hope. There you, you go. There you go. There you go. I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. I'm not oh, cheating. Oh, dear Lord. I'm not cheating. I what am... What is this? I'm actually done. Yeah. No, you're not. It has to be the proper boat. <laughs> it has to be the proper one. But it is. So if it's not the proper oh, one... Oh, but yours is creeping as well. No, it's not. Then what happens? Oh. There's something else. And then there you go. But <laughs> <laughs> Where is it as well? Know. What is that? Oh, it is a board. Let us see the ends. Why are your ends open? Wait. Let me tell you, this is a Trump board. <laughs> It is. Aisha's boat is open at the other end. <laughs> this is definitely artistic. <laughs> this is definitely artistic, Tisa. This, this can flow. This can flow on well. This is very It's beautiful. okay. I was making a heart anyway. So, so there you go. Mikali, please. <laughs> Mine is a heart and I'm walking it. Okay. Yes. We've got performing arts, we've got visual arts, we've got spoken art, and of course, paintbrush. And yeah, well, the, the one I've been today. This is not oh, even yeah. working. <laughs> so there you have. Aisha will be taking us through the performing arts. Who do we have today? Uh, we have an amazing. Amazing jazz musician. Whoa. Yeah, I know you're used to your to readings, <laughs> to reggae. So sit back, Mikali. Take take the hat as you as you walk, because I know you liked it, and take a selfie. Well, at it. Okay. Now we are moving on to performing arts, and I'm telling you, they say that jazz is music for the soul. Yes, and we have a phenomenal jazz musician with us today, Kristen Kamau. Hi, Kristen. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How you look you? very good. Thank you, you too. Thank you for making time. No worries. So what does it mean to be a jazz musician? Do you just walk around with a trumpet? Yes, I do that. <laughs> Many other things as well. A jazz musician is uh, a career I chose five to six years ago. I love playing music. Um, I love instrumental music. And jazz music speaks through improvisation. It speaks through people saying their ideas to their music. And that is what being a jazz musician is. Capturing oh, wow. people's emotions. Wow. Yeah. Five, uh, six years ago. Yes. So if I can ask you, how old were you then? How old was I then? I'm not going to reveal my age to everyone. Because a woman doesn't tell. <laughs> a woman doesn't tell. It's okay. But I'm still very young. And I'm still not so young. So it's somewhere in the middle. Oh, okay, because most of the times you yeah. hear that, um, okay, yeah, I'm a musician, but mm -hmm. then I have a background in something else. So um, did you go to school for a different course before you divide, diverted to music? Uh, yes. Um, yes and no, because I started music when I was young, when I was 11, on classical piano. And I did that for a very long time and picked a trumpet on the way. And then I applied to Kenyatta University to study music and they didn't pick me. So I ended up going to Daystar University to study communication. And after that, I still carried on with my music. So. Um, I can say I've been doing music all my life. What do you mean they didn't pick you? What's the criteria? I don't know. I actually went there and asked them how come I didn't get called to study music because I really wanted to go there and study. And uh, I, never, I never got a, a, a letter of, um, you know, the way you apply to yeah. university and they, and they respond. I never, admission letter. Yeah, yes, admission letter. I never got that from them. So. Oh wow. Yeah, story oh, wow. of my life. But it's You better give them it. a shout out now because, you know, like, hey, I'm on KK Life and Style and I'm doing things. I, I think I should. Yeah, I didn't give up on my career, no, on my I did passion. Not. I, did, I did not. And, but I'm actually glad that that happened. I still was able to, you know, experience other things as well. And pursue it. Yes. So where did you go now that KU, mm -hmm. um, uh, they didn't give you an admission letter? Yes. But then you went to Daystar for yes. communication. Yes. So where did you go to study music? I've been studying music since I was 11. I was, I was studying classical piano uh, where I lived. I, I grew up in Nakuru and I'd been studying you know, with an old white lady. She was called Mrs. Button and she's the one who uh, taught me for a while. And uh, after that, I, I went to study at the Kenya Conservatory of Music. That's where I studied wow. uh, the trumpet. And as most musicians do this day, uh, these days, I also study uh, on, going, uh, on, on YouTube as well, just looking at videos and seeing what they're doing and, and trying to copy It's that amazing. Stuff. Like most yeah. of the stories you hear, like right here, 
yeah the testimonies they're like yeah, yeah i just had a passion but then i went on youtube yeah. and you know just it's putting in the time and getting just old videos yes. and yeah yes. it has really sharpened like so many people's skills it, it has and the world has changed you know we, we, we don't live in a time whereby you can say oh i didn't go to school to study this therefore i can't do it or i'm not empowered there's so much information out there the power is always in your hands to do what you want to do very true so is this the only instrument you play no 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 not at all this is actually my third instrument i started on the piano Piano, yeah. And then I um, actually the second instrument. Then I played the moved to the trumpet, and then also tried uh, the alto saxophone, which I play uh, just on the side. Uh, so I play three instruments. So you mentioned about a teacher mm -hmm. who has been taking you through the classical piano lessons. Yes. So meaning this is not something mm -hmm. that was um, an option in school. Like it wasn't part of the school you went to. Uh, there was music in the school, uh, and my music teacher noticed I had a talent. Um, because every time he'd play the piano, I'd go and stand and just stare at him. So he recommended my parents to my parents and said, why don't you enroll her for proper music lessons? Because she seems to be um. very inter interested. And that's how I ended up studying, uh, starting on classical music. That is amazing. Yeah. It must have been, wh what school is this? It's Lyons Primary School, Nakuru, wherever they are. I know. Big, big ups. <laughs> big oh, ups. yeah, because most of the school, you don't find, like, they have that option, that kind of option. Uh, like, there's even a piano, you yeah. know. Like, most of the time, music class is just singing. Singing, and unfortunately, but I hope with, uh, with people being enlightened, we'll go back and, and facilitate these instruments to a, to a primary school so we can have more talent uh, out there, people representing in music. Okay, now let's get up this. All right, you'd like me to play something? Yeah. All right, I'll play my own version of a tune that I think everybody knows, which is Malaika. It's a, a famous Kenyan song, so yes. that people can resonate to the music. Okay. All right. Amazing. Thank you. So most of your pieces, is it adaptive pieces or do you actually compose? I actually am a songwriter and composer. Oh, wow. Uh, I have an album of okay. all my original music and they're all instrumental. Uh, but of late I've been uh, fusing or putting in vocals as well to my music. So it's not only instrumental but has some uh, 
few vocals here. Oh, you sing as well. So I, I guess well. that is that the yes, this is the yes, well. the album. Yes, this is it. It's called "This Is for You." Oh, so this is Christine's album, and it's called "This Is for You." It has. Eight pieces. Yes, eight tracks. All of those tracks are actually instrumental on this album. It's my first album. I did it like four years ago, um, and I'm very proud of it. <laughs> what is one of your great pieces from this album? All of them. All of them? Yes. Why all of them? All of them because they're all my, my songs. Your creations. It's to, to, yeah, it's hard to say this one is better than the other one because each of them has a story to tell. Um, I guess I usually allow people to listen to the music and tell me what they feel from each of the songs and you know what stands out for them. But for me, I, I think all of them uh, stand great out for pieces. Me. They're great pieces. Okay, there are your own creation, yes. and you said all of them they stand out to you. Yes. But then there's also this thing about attachment. Okay. Yeah. Most artists they have like this attachment, even mm -hmm. musicians, to specific pieces. Probably because of the time you okay. did the piece. The inspiration behind it. Okay. Like, okay. if you were to yeah. pick, like today, like, okay, Christine, come perform just one from your album. Wow, I'd probably perform the last one, which is Baba. Baba Africa. Uh, that was a tribute to a trumpeter from South Africa called Huma Sekela, who I've looked up to since I started music. And I wrote that particular piece just as a tribute to him because I, I find he's uh, currently the the father of African music, one of the oldest uh, musicians we have who are still playing and who are still representing African music out there. So that, probably I normally play that one when I'm out performing with my band. Hugh Masekela, he, he actually loves to prolong his name. He's very iconic in the jazz industry. Definitely. And he was actually in the country. Did you get to go for his, um, since he's now an icon, did you get yes. to go? I've actually watched him three times. Every time ah, he's come nice. to Kenya, I have been there. <laughs> actually, the first time I watched him, I got an autograph, and I was very oh, proud, of, proud of that yeah. in a picture as well. Uh, he's really iconic, like you're saying, and uh, I really look up to him and his playing. Oh, okay. So yeah. how long does it... Okay, just before we move on to other instruments, yeah? yeah. We would love to... Can we give this out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. definitely. So we'll give this out to one of you, the lucky one, just kindly tell me, which instruments does Christine Kamau play apart from the trumpets? She mentioned all the instruments, so it's very easy. Just quickly go to our social media platforms, Twitter and Instagram, that's the same handle, at KT and Life underscore style, Facebook at KT and Life and Style, and our SMS number is 22840. Just type to the hashtag KT and Life and Style and tell me, which instruments does Christine Kamau play apart from the trumpet? And do you stand a chance to win? Remember, the hashtag is Katie and Life and Style. Start with that. And you never know. It might be you. Yes, you. So apart from that, I wanted to ask you, how long does it take to play the trumpet? Because it looks very complicated. Um, I'm just going to give a very uh, a, a cliche answer because you never really finish learning an instrument. And the time you finish learning is the time you finished, really. Um, so I'd say it's all your life. You keep learning, you keep improving. There's always things to, to, to work on. So um, if you give yourself a time frame, that would be limiting yourself. Uh, but most people start out maybe young or whatever, whatever age you start out on. Um, you just keep doing it for the rest of your life and keep improving. Yeah. Amazing. So now, <laughs> because it looks very complicated, <laughs> do you remember the time when Vuvuzelas were the in thing? Trust me, people call me like, where is that <laughs> and I usually get very offended. I'm like, it's a proper instrument. It's not that noisy, noisy thing. <laughs> yeah, the plastic ones. Yes. So I've ever tried, and I have never known how to, you know, how to work a vuvuzela until today. Yeah. So I'm looking at this trumpet, and I'm like, dear Lord, <laughs> will I even know where to start? Because you also have the keys. <sighs> it's, it's pretty, how can I put it? I usually say you... There's a certain way you should put your lips actually to be able to, to get a sound on. This thing right here is called a mouthpiece. It's okay. separate from the rest of the instrument. Ah, it act it's so, actually yeah, it's removable. A, it's, uh -huh. Yeah, it's, separa it's, se it's separable. So you, you should be able to uh, buzz on this or get a, a, a certain sound on it. On the and, mouthpiece. And the vibration you get on, the, on this mouthpiece is what actually makes the trumpet uh, make a sound. 
So really, with this particular instrument, it's your lips are like 90%. Um, yeah, what, into it. Yeah. So if I was to take that, I'll just spoil your career. I have many more pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't have one. <laughs> so you do you do other pieces with probably other jazz musicians? Um, yes, yes. I, I have a band. I work with a guitarist and a percussionist. Uh, currently, we've been trying to play different festivals. Uh, we just came back from a festival in Tanzania in a place called Bagamoyo. It was ah, like, Bagamoyo. Oh, yeah. It's a really okay. artistic, uh, uh, laid-back town, and uh, really, it was really too nice to play jazz with those people because uh, most of their musicians playing reggae and traditional, and then give them some jazz. There's also another jazz artist from South Africa, so I, I've been trying to work with uh, different musicians and with my group, my my trio, the three of us, uh, uh, to get our music out where there. Where are they today? They're they're not here. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready for another piece to be blown away. All right. So okay. what's the next piece? Can uh, we get something from the album? Um, actually, I would prefer not to. I would like people to hear something different, like what I've been working on, because that album is four years old, so oh. maybe something new, if that's okay. That you've grown also, yeah, definitely. I've grown. So okay. I'll probably play and, and sing a little bit, even if there's no band. Um, yes, <laughs> why not? Just go all the way out. I go all the way. Yes. I can't feel it in my head. It's in a style of music called funk. Funk okay. is a sort of old uh, 1970s kind of music, but this is my interpretation of it. The song is called Feel It in My feel Head. Feel it. You're right. ready. Let's go feel it. Feel it in my head. It has some vocals, but then I couldn't figure out the key without the <laughs> without the guitar and stuff, so uh -huh. I didn't sing. Yeah. Are yeah. you ever going to do a different album? Because now it sounds like it's something, as you said, it's something new. Yes. And this album you did four years ago. Yes. 
So are you going to have like such pieces? Yes. In a new album? Yes, yes. I'm actually uh, looking forward to working on my new album from next year in 2017. Um, I'm glad I've waited this long because I've had a chance to uh, experience and work with different musicians, grow as a musician, have different musical ideas. I've always wanted to fuse African music to jazz because I don't see the point of playing jazz the way it was played in America, where it came from. Though technically it also came from Africa because the slaves from Africa went to America and created this music. But I've always been so keen to try and fuse maybe a bit of benga, a bit of rumba into the jazz and create something unique that Kenyans can hear and relate to. Uh, because at times people say, ah, that jazz, that's, you know, that's music for, they, they don't, rich. yeah, the rich or, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was avoiding that word, but thank you for saying that. No, but the, that's, the, that's what they say. People have different perceptions of it. And I'm like, not really. The root of jazz actually came from the slaves and people who were working, people who were breaking their backs and sweating, trying to get uh, work done and doing such hard labor. So it's music that we should all be able to relate to and I hope to be able to fuse our African elements of jazz, I mean of uh, our African music with jazz and create something unique. unique. Amazing. Yeah. But that is all, a comp it's, it's something that can be achieved though. Yes. Considering you have a guitarist. Yes. And you still have a pianist at the same time. Yes. Ah, okay. And a percussionist and a bassist. So what's yeah. that one piece that, have you tried, okay you said it's something that you want to try. Yes. So have you, like, in your moment, have you, you know, before you think of something, yes. you've probably tried it. Yes. So have you, do you have any piece? Um, yes, but it would be hard to do it just by myself because all the other elements, especially African music, is made African with the guitar and the percussion. So um, I wouldn't be able to demonstrate that right now. But yes, it's there. And on my CD, there's a song called African People and a song called uh, even Baba Africa, sort of fuse uh, the benga we have here, a lot of oh, yeah. African guitars in, in that as well. And so people can check it out. Okay, how come we don't have a drumist? A drummer. Oh, actually, oh, yes. a drama. <laughs> a Good drama. Lord. A drama. Yes. Uh, okay. What I, what I do at the moment, I, I I operate as a trio, and at times as a full band. As okay. a trio, it's just trumpet, guitar, and percussions. And when I need to play as a full band, then it's the trumpet, guitar, percussions, bassist, uh, keyboardist, and drummer. So it's like a full a full, full band. Set. Yeah. yeah. So do you do this full time? Yes, I do it full time. Does it pay? Um, yes, it does. It does. <laughs> yes. What is the highest point of your career? Uh, so far in these five years, yes, um, my album is definitely top there. Um, uh, what else is high? I still feel like uh, there's so much to do. <laughs> I still feel there's so much I can achieve, so much I can, I can put together. So I can say being able to do that album uh, has been a great uh, point in my career. Having it featured even on places like BBC was really, I was really proud of that. Oh, yeah. BBC? Yes. Oh, that is really amazing. When was this? <laughs> it was in 2012, and also this year they did another feature as well of the music, so I was really surprised. How was surprised. that when you got a call? Uh, sorry? How was that when you got featured? Um, exciting, exciting. It was, I was featured along Eric Kwenaina and Atemi Oyungu oh, wow. and other African musicians like Carmen D'Souza, VX uh, Fakature from is it Mali or some, one of those countries. They're, they're different African musicians as well. It was, it was exciting. I was really glad to be able to have the music on such a platform yeah. and people to, you know, enjoy and, and send their feedback and say, oh, we like this and, you know, keep doing it. That was really encouraging. And that, that is why you actually need this album. Keep on tweeting. Yeah, the hashtag to use is very easy, KTN Life and Style, our Twitter and Instagram page is the same, KTN Life underscore Style, and our, our Facebook page is KTN Life and Style. Remember, our SMS number is 22840, very easy to win. Just kindly tell me which instruments does Christine Kamau play apart from the trumpet, and start your tweets with the hashtag KTN Life and Style. So what are some of the challenges, like, before you get here, before you even do an album, all yes. these classes, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, there's so many challenges as a, as a, I think in any career, I don't think there's any career that you get into and it's just smooth all the way. Um, there's always a, what we call occupational hazards. Uh, for music, one of the greatest challenges is your own family accepting what you're doing, especially in our country here. And now that I'm sitting here, I like, I'm actually proud to say that I came, uh, my, my family has really supported me. But at times uh, there's, you know, people have their doubts and it's, it's not easy to get, um, you know, just larger society to accept what it is that you're doing. You always get the question, you're doing music for a living, you know, um, how is that and so on. So just those societal um, uh, doubts that people cast 
cast on you. Um, also, uh, it's not easy to do an album, um, you know, the finances and so on, and pe to get people to in invest in that and sell the music. And at times, you know, you do an album and then you find people are downloading it or put someone, like for my music, I found someone that put it on YouTube, just so un un uh, uh -huh. unfortunate. Um, so, so it's really uh, um, su such challenges as that. Um, as well as, um, let's say, information, because uh, I'll speak as a jazz musician here in, in Kenya. You don't have um, places where you can actually go study jazz. Most of us study um, from YouTube. At the moment, I'm actually taking lessons from uh, a, a jazz musician in New York, and we, we do it via Skype, because it really, by the time I get an American visa, <laughs> go, to, go yeah. to America and get the lessons, really. Yeah. And these days, we have technology, so I'm actually studying uh, jazz via Skype, uh, but uh, be, uh, which is, uh, not everyone has access to um, you know internet. such opportunities internet yeah. and opportunities yeah. and the connections as well so uh, just that information and education music education is very important you know people complain about oh Kenyan music this or local music that it's just about education when the music musicians are educated about music like they can go on stage and you know they're pitch perfect or they can tell the different keys or you know they're really educated on the music then the music will be different so I think that's one of the few but one of the challenges that we have yeah. as Okay. As musicians, yeah. So you say you're a singer as well? Yes, uh, a bathroom singer. <laughs> I'm mostly an instrumentalist, but well, I we play, have a, yeah. We have a kitchen in the studio. Okay. It's not a bathroom. <laughs> but you just have to imagine a bathroom right. and sing your way <laughs> through it. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, well, I, in my profile and in everywhere that I write my stuff, I never describe myself as a singer. It's just because when you go out there to perform at times, you know, there, there needs to be some singing done. And since you're standing in front there and you, you, you know, you're the lead, so at times I sing, but Just I'm sing. not a singer. I'm not taking excuses. You're already here. <laughs> Can you get something? What you do behind oh the trumpet? Oh my goodness. Yes. You want me to sing something? All right. Maybe in the next song, I can play an attempt to sing. So an attempt. An, an, an attempt to sing. So I'm not attempt. going to lie to Kenyans that I'm a singer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. Um, but I sing. Yeah, I sing, but I'm not a singer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you don't want to put your vocals on test? I do, I do not want to embarrass the rest of the Kenyan singers. You know, they'd be like, this girl says she's a singer. You know, we can and do she's better. Not. And she's not. So Magic I sings. sing, but I'm not a singer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you have another piece? All right. Um, I can do one. It's called Miela Miela. Miela Miela means dance, dance in Luo. Oh. And uh, this is one of, uh, of the new tracks. I'll try and sing. So it's a feel one. good jam. It's feel good. Yeah. Kind of feel okay. good. All right.
What inspired uh, Miela Miela? Um, is that the name? Yeah, Miela Miela. Okay. And so I, I think I was just feeling happy, so <laughs> I, I wrote a happy, uh, happy tune. Um, it's in a uh, with the rest of the with the band. Uh, it's in a style called chakacha. The the beat of it's a bit of chakacha and some modern chords as well. So it's a nice uh, fusion. Ah, yeah. so the entire, the enti that was just a bit of it? That was a bit of it, yeah. So the entire thing, what does it say? Uh, just like a synopsis of it. It says, mother, mother, what must I do? And then the other lyric says, just dance to the music that I'm playing. Ah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's like what it means. It's for people to enjoy and relax. When you feel like, I don't know what I want to do, or I don't, I don't know what to do, I'm frustrated. You just dance to the music that you can, you can hear. Okay, so the rest of your band, mm -hmm. the the two the two guys. Yes. How did you guys meet? Um, I met them. My guitarist is actually called Kumla Young. He's from Ghana, Accra, Ghana. Um, he's uh, around sixty-two years old, and uh, we met here in Nairobi. Uh, I like to most evenings. I like to just go uh, up and about and find a band when I'm not performing and, and jam with them. And someone told me, there's a nice guitarist in town. He's from Ghana. He's really, you know, he's got jazz chops. He's really good. I was like, OK, give me his number. And so I called him up. And we met to rehearse and just to, you know, feel our musical vibes. There's not really any commitment at the moment. Um, so we just met and worked, uh, you know, uh, worked on the music. I showed him some of my songs and we just clicked. And, uh, and then I met the percussionist to someone else I'd worked with um, from years ago uh, who recommended him. And so we formed a nice trio that we're currently uh, performing together. So he's from Ghana, but he's yeah. based in he's Kenya? He's living in Nairobi at the oh, moment. Oh, wow, he's yeah. 62. He's 62. He's a bit of a guitar legend in his country. Um, people really look up to him. Uh, he's really amazing on the, on the instrument. Um, yes. Uh, and this for you, like yeah. by the time you're contacting him, had yes. you already worked on your album? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, sorry, that was, when I met him was m way after, way after this album. So most of the music we do is new stuff. Uh, Maybe you just maybe don't leave Baba Africa from that track, from that uh, album. Uh, yeah. Baba Africa. Yeah, that's oh, what okay. probably we, we do together. Together. With this, yeah. Oh, with him. Yeah. So apart from music, what yeah. else do you do when you don't have a gig? <laughs> what I practice. <laughs> I play three instruments. I'm not going to say what they are because there's a question yeah. and everybody. <laughs> don't make it to. easy for them. To <laughs> no, I, I won't. But I practice. I mean, I practice. Uh, you know. Uh, like I said, I take some lessons and then I have to practice throughout the week because when I have the, you know, the Skype lesson with my tutor from uh, the States, then, you know, he's like, have you been practicing? He can tell if I haven't been practicing, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, like if you miss like, something? Yeah, like if, uh, you know, if I don't, like, do what he told me to be, like, he tells me, okay, work on this stuff and work on that stuff. And then when we do the next video call, he's listening. And if I haven't practiced, you know, it's a waste of his time and it's such a distance. So I really, that's mostly what I do. I practice, um, you know, I look for gigs when I'm not gigging, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, apply for festivals, um, you know, write songs also. I try and write a song every day or just work on a musical idea every day so that uh, I don't get rusty and also just yeah. to keep the inspiration. So clearly yeah. you've come f a long way. You even talked about your family, like, yeah. you know, just not really understanding what is this girl doing? Oh, with you know, she trumpet. went to Dexter, <laughs> yeah. She walks around with that trumpet all day. Exactly. You don't even understand. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you, like, what is the motivation behind it? For me, I've always loved music. It, it doesn't matter what it is that I'm playing or what instrument or what it is. I've always loved music. I've loved listening to music. When I was younger, I think around 12 or 13, and uh, I used to get, you know, when, when I'd even need, need to go to the shower, I'd actually go with music in the bedroom. I'm with music and I'm doing my homework. I'm with music. And my mom used to complain, like, you, you know, all this music all the time. I've really always loved music. So for me, it's just like, it's a way of life. It's like a fish in water. Really, there's, you can't separate the two. So it's, it's my lifestyle. Music is my lifestyle. It's my career. It's what it's, you eat, what you breathe. Exactly. Exactly. So it's everything. Really Clearly, everything. you can really tell, like, even from how you speak about it, yeah. you're very passionate about it. <laughs> so for someone else who is very passionate about it, yes. but I know, doesn't know where to begin, probably also the family is in doubt, like, yeah. no, 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 go to school, Study. get a degree. Yes. Yeah. And what would you tell them? I tell them this. Um, music is a calling. And music is a gift. No one, no one um, sort of 
paid any money to God for the gift of music. So if you can sing or if you have a, you know, if you're musical, it's a gift from God and your allegiance is to him first. So, um, you know, so I tell them, um, work on your gift, work on your music and, and go for it because really, I mean, I don't think God made a mistake when he, he was giving someone a musical talent. gift, a talent. So whatever, it doesn't really even have to be music. music. Whatever talent yeah. it is, it's a God-given gift. There's, I don't think there's any talent you really, um, you know, that you pay any money or, yeah. you know, you, at times you work on refining the skill, but the raw product is actually a, a supernatural gift, yeah, and in you, so you have to honor it. Okay, what, another piece? Another piece. <laughs> No? No. <laughs> ran out. Okay. That was beautiful out. though. Thank you for making time. Thank we you. We really, really appreciate. Thank and you remember, so we still have an album up for grabs. What was the question, Christine? The question is, what other instrument does Christine come out? That is me. What <laughs> other instrument does Christine come out play apart from the trumpet? I mentioned them throughout the interview. Mm -hmm. So if you can, um, if you can, um, if you can, you know, text or sending the answers you're going to get a free copy of my album this is for you so it's very easy to win this album remember to tweet us on our platforms and the hashtag to use is katie and life and style we are going to have paintbrush next with Mikali, but first we need to pay our bills